So here is an overview of how an Evinrude 4 horsepower carburetor works. This has been stripped down to help us to understand the workings of it. So just turning it over there and you can look into where the float chamber would be and just where I'm pointing to there that's an air intake to prevent the vacuum forming in the float chamber and also that's the main jet uh, threaded socket there and in the middle of that main jet there's a little brass tube that's the low speed idle fuel feed it goes up through the middle of the throat of the carburetor up to the top there and that that large larger hole in the middle at the on the left is for the air adjust to adjust the slow speed idle so it's possible to clean that out with carb cleaner which dissolves all the deposits that little hole there and the other one are the bypass air and the float chamber breather. So just clean all the ports there and that will drain off and bring away all the deposits with it. So this little port here and this one here have two different functions. This one here is your slow speed idle air adjust. That brass tube, again that's the the fuel feed for the slow speed idle. So that little brass tube can get blocked and you can just have a look down there through the throat valve, throttle valve, just to see that everything's clean inside there. So this air channel here goes along and into the carburetor and this one goes along and down to the float chamber which is underneath here so they have tiny tiny passages in them that can easily get blocked so it's important to give them a good clean So just to reassemble, you fit the rubber washer into the slow speed idle port. Just gently push it home. And then there's a nylon washer that sits on top of that to pack it in. And then in on top of that, there's a brass nut that packs it down to form a good air airtight seal so that the slow speed idle uh, will work properly without any air leaking past. So just tighten that brass nut on make sure the packing is driven down into the into its seat and reassemble the the main jet it just threads down into the the ports there and the middle of the brass tube goes into the middle of the main jet so it's not too easy to see but that's all been cleaned out now then get the the bar that controls the the choke leave the choke valve. Just seat that in there and attach the brass plate. The little hole should uh, eventually face down. The little hole on the brass plate faces down. It's the wrong way around in this video but I, I change it in a minute. This is a little fiddly, needs a little patience. 
you have to be sure you don't cross thread the screw. So here it is with the, the plate attached correctly. So now that's on, it's time to fit the bowl. bowl assembly along with the float and the fuel needle valve. Just make sure the choke works properly before you proceed and that it mates properly with the side of the throat of the air intake. So here's the float. There's a little spring clip there that holds the fuel needle valve in position and then there's a little nylon rod that secures the float assembly to the carburetor body. It's a quite a snug fit so you might need a screwdriver or pliers to push it home. The pin on this got slightly damaged so it was necessary to trim it a little. So this float is quite worn. It would be a good idea to change it maybe on the next carburetor service. But it is functioning fine for the time being. So just fit the, the seal that goes between the carburetor body and the bowl. And just make sure the main jet is snugly tightened and the carburetor bowl can then be dropped into place. And that's held by four screws. The little aluminium plate just has the part number of the carburetor on it which is very useful when trying to source parts because this engine is more than 30 years old. So the rubber gasket was in good condition so it could be reused. So that's the main assembly done. The slow idle needle valve would have to be fitted and also the choke lever and the roll cam. But after starting the engine it now idles perfectly and it's able to change from low idle to high idle quite smoothly and there's plenty of power and smoothness there. So thanks for watching and hope this video is useful. Uh, in identifying the different parts of your carburetor and cleaning them out. Thanks for watching. Bye now.